Hi, welcome back to my whiteboard. I'm Kevin Dorma. This is part three in the control series. We will start by defining the process gain for a heat exchanger and see how this applies to temperature control. This is a schematic for a typical temperature control loop. The objective is to hold the process temperature on set point by adjusting the control valve that supplies hot oil. Process gain defines how sensitive the control objective is to a change in the controller output, or valve position in this case. If the process gain is uniform over a wide range of valve positions, then the control loop will be very robust. Let's look at some math to determine the process gain for a temperature control loop. On the process side, the flow rate and inlet temperature are specified. The temperature difference between the process outlet and inlet is theta p. The hot oil mass flow rate is mh, and the temperature difference between the outlet and inlet is theta h. The control valve position is x. The process gain is the change in process outlet temperature or temperature difference for a change in control valve position. With some calculus, we break this into two parts. The change in temperature difference for a change in oil flow rate is the flow gain. The change in oil flow rate for a change in valve position is the valve gain. The valve gain is dictated by the choice of control valve. We will focus on the first part, which is the flow gain. The energy balance on the process side relates the process mass flow rate and temperature rise to the heat load Q. The energy balance also applies to the hot oil side. We combine, these, we combine these to get an expression for the process temperature rise. We take the derivative with respect to the hot oil flow rate and obtain an expression for the flow gain. However, this expression is not very useful because we need the gain in terms of the manipulated hot oil flow rate and we would like to express the gain in terms of the desired change in process temperature, not the change in hot oil temperature. So we go back to the energy balance and notice that we can replace some terms. And now we get a very convenient expression for the flow gain. <clears throat> it is the target temperature rise for the process and the associated hot oil mass flow rate. Note that the flow gain is inversely related to the hot oil flow rate. Graphically, the relation between the flow gain and hot oil flow rate is shown here. There is a high flow gain at low flow rate and a low gain at high flow rate. There are two common control valve characteristics, a linear valve and an equal percent valve. A linear valve produces the same increase in flow rate for an additional 1% valve opening over the entire range of valve positions. The equal percent valve produces a small increase in flow when the valve is nearly closed and a large increase in flow when the valve is nearly full open. If a linear valve is used, the process gain will be high at small valve openings and low at large valve openings. The process gain is not uniform. But if an equal percent valve is used, the delicate action of the valve when nearly closed counteracts the aggressive process behavior. This produces a more uniform gain over a wide range of flow rates. What is the benefit? Let's compare temperature control with linear and equal percent valves where the controller is tuned to work well at normal rates. Then we will turn the flow down to one-third of normal. This will cause the process gain to increase by a factor of three. This will also cause the time delay, or pipe transit time, to also increase by a factor of three. We will adjust that as well. This is our heat exchanger example that we looked at in part two. We will use the lambda tuning that is designed to target a 20-second response.
the response is smooth and non-oscillatory. Now, let's increase the process gain by a factor of 3. We will leave the time delay alone to start with. Now the response is more aggressive and there is a bit of overshoot. I would say the control is still pretty good, but let's increase the time delay. Now the control is unstable. This suggests that a linear valve would only be stable for a relatively narrow range of process flow rates. Let's go back to normal rates. This will also be the response at the lower flow rate conditions if the time delay does not stretch out. So let's increase the time delay. Now the response is stable at reduced rates. We found that the choice of control valve characteristic is very important to ensure that the control system is robust over a wide range of operating conditions. An understanding of the hydraulic behavior will determine which type of trim is best suited for the application. This type of hydraulic modeling also allows us to tweak the control software where the wrong control valve is used. Next is part four, level control. I'm Kevin Dorma please visit my website at www.kevindorma.ca. Take care.